Next up, we have faculty members from beyond just the Department of Biomedical Engineering and Department of Art. I'd like Thank to you. present you, Dr. Ivy, if you'd like to speak yeah, sure. now, feel free. Thank you. So after seeing all the exhibits, you know, on, oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I just wanted to mention uh, that I seeing after these exhibits, I was quite inspired, and I I wish I had made a different talk if I have time at the end. I will briefly mention passing my other project that is more relatable to what I see in here, and perhaps see how I can in, enter into conversation with you folks and how I can bring in art into the project. But that said, let me talk about this particular project. So, um, so in the short presentation, what I will do, sorry, in the short presentation, what I will do is I will present. Uh, what I, th what I will say is uh, uh, a project, a multidiscipline project that has a promise to serve as an inexpensive and effective non-pharmaceutical intervention that has a global reach for a problem of vital importance in health, which is Parkinson's. So we are a, sorry. So we are a multidisciplinary team working on this project. The team is made up of Rene Fabus, who is the chair of Speed Pathology in the Schoenberg School of Health Sciences, Irene Morris, who is a music therapist in the School of Health Professions, Sarah Cohen, who is a Parkinson specialist, Center for Parkinson's Disease at Stonebrook University of Southampton Hospital, Peter Jurek, who is a chair of electrical computer engineering, myself, and my colleague Paul Fodo from Computer Science. Uh, so let's quickly take a look at what causes Parkinson's at a very high level, okay? So there, of course, there are deeper issues, but I'll, I'll touch it, I'll, I'll just stay at high level. So the brain cells create what is called, the chemical called dopamine, and they, you need dopamine in order to control the movements, and if dopamine making cells die, it can stop making those chemicals, and that triggers Parkinson's. And Parkinson's is indeed a progressive neurological disease and it's lifelong. So Parkinson's is a neurological, is a movement disorder. When one hears of someone having Parkinson's, you usually associate that with the common symptoms such as tremors. Of course, there are other uh, movement functions like gait and walking that are also affected by Parkinson's. Now, since being a progressive disease, over time, it really impacts the quality of life of a patient. And then there are, of course, treatments, medical treat medications that target these kinds of functions and are shown to be effective. But over time, the effectiveness wanes, and then the quality of life again continues to deteriorate because Parkinson is indeed a relentless disease. So, along with this kind of movement disorders, non-movement disorders are also quite common among Parkinson's patients. For example, 90% are voice and swallowing difficulties. And these two cause a big significant drop in the quality of life. There are medications, medications used, used to treat classic symptoms as well as things like uh, the deep brain stimulation are not effective for non-movement disorders in Parkinson's patients. So only, even the only small percentage of patients get treated for voice problems, but then the drop rate is high because the symptoms do not seem to be alleviated. So people have explored what is called singing as a non-pharmaceutical intervention for Parkinson's patients to take care of their voice problems. So singing is a culturally universal pastime. Everybody loves singing, right? Uh, and it naturally targets the oral uh, motor, motor system it is non, most important, it is non-pharmaceutical, -pharma you know, it, you don't need medications. Uh, intensifies, the singing intensifies various kinds of speech production activity aspects. It is shown to improve muscle function, improves voice quality, speech production, respiratory function, swallowing, etc. But on the flip side, it is like jogging, you know, how, if you are a, jogging is a solitary activity. So over time you get bored and you give up. The same thing happens, if you're going to sing in a solitary fashion, you're going to give up at some point. So what is the answer? Join a chorus. <laughs> Join a chorus. That's called a group singing therapy. So group singing is a socially active, a social activity. You feel camaraderie with other people, like-minded people who are in the chorus. You feel a sense of belonging, and as consequent, as a conse uh, consequently, what happens? It alleviates your 
isolation improves your mood, reduces stress, depression symptoms, improves the overall quality of life. Indeed, there is a big study that has confirmed these benefits. So now let me segue to what we are doing here in Stony Brook. So this project, which we call a single loud, sing loud chorus program, it was conceived by and developed by Rene Fabus, Lee Morris, and Sarah Cohen. And what is unique about this program is that it is a virtual program. In the sense, the participants participate in the chorus virtually via Zoom. Um, so they can do it from the comfort and the familiarity of the home settings. It's an eight-week program. The intervention is an eight-week program. And what is the significance? It's got a global reach. So anybody from anywhere in the world can be a part of the chorus. All that they need is an AV system a co and a confident platform like Zoom. OK, so where are we right now? So these virtual con sessions are being conducted by the spe speech pathologist uh, Rene Fabers. The songs and genres are selected by the speech pathologist and the neurologic, neurologic music therapist Irene Morris. These sessions are recorded by audio and video. The audio sequence are going to be analyzed by signal processing models by the EC expert. It's going to, the, the, the analysis is going to assess various kinds of acoustic parameters like vocal loudness, frequency, and range parameters, look at the time sequence of the sessions that have been recorded. And the perceptual, perceptual parameters for quality of life improvements are also going to be assessed. So where are we right now? 13 Parkinson's patients have been enrolled. The baseline assessments have been completed. The group sessions are going on as we speak. The analysis of speech is going to begin shortly, and Peter Jurek and his students are going to do that. Uh, now, oh sorry. So this is really, quick. I'm going to go back to the previous slide. Where is it? Okay. So this really is STEM, right? STEAM. You have uh, STEM represented by the signal processing experts, signal processing being done, and arts represented by the music part of it. So really, this is, a, this is very in line with the theme of STEAM here. Now, the fact that they're also doing, we're also doing video recording, we want to exploit that. And how do you want to exploit that? There is a problem that Parkinson's patients experience. That's called hypomia, hypomimia, which is actually called facial masking or a loss of expression, facial expressions or reduction in facial expressions. So the idea is, can this group singing also alleviate those symptoms of hypomimia? And so what you want to do is analyze the video recordings and this is where we want to bring in computer vision experts who can analyze the sequence of video recording and look for any changes in the facial features over time. And hopefully, this is a very interesting question, and we believe the single, long, single out chorus program that we have in place provides the right avenue for looking at this open, interesting, important problem. Okay? That said, I want to conclude saying virtual, virtual single long allowed intervention has a huge potential. It's an inexpensive intervention. You have got a global reach, and if our study shows effectiveness, the impact will be significant. Thank you. <laughs> so as I, as I promised, I'm going to talk about one, one of my other projects in pausing, which, will, which I think the students here will quickly relate to that. So we have an ongoing, again, a inter multidisciplinary project that's ongoing right now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, Department of Mechanical Engineering, Computer Science, various people in Computer Science, and the School of Health. It's called the robot, the wheelchair, uh, wheelchair mount, uh, robot arm mounted wheelchair project, where we're designing this particular wheelchair with a robot arm for people with quadriplegia. So the idea is people with quadriplegia are not able to move their, they have severe locomotive disabilities, they're not able to move their arms and arms at all. So can they be able to manipulate the robot arm just using their gaze and their voice. So that's the project that's ongoing right now. And what I would like to do is, being inspired by what I see here, I want to see how I can bring in arts into the project. I don't know, but I would certainly like to have a, engage in a conversation on that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ivy. That's really amazing work. I know a lot of people have Parkinson's, and even my family was affected. So I know that this type of application could definitely be used in the future. It is quite welcome.